Uh, anda bersama saya Rizal Zulkafli dan kali ini kita bersama dengan pemenang daripada EOY Taiwan dan kita, kita bersama dengan Franz Chen daripada Franz Collection. Hi. Uh, Hi. First of all, let's talk about um, the your company and your product, okay. which is a porcelain um, uh-huh. vases. Mm. And it's not something new, mm. but you've actually injected mm-hmm. elements of design mm-hmm. and making it hip, in yes, that sense. Right, right. Um, tell us about that. Okay, actually, uh, porcelain industry has been existing in the world at least more than 1,000 years, mm. right? So, uh, the people were treated as a traditional uh, industry. I think that is because uh, they are facing a bottleneck about the technique, whether they can break it through. But the technique side, actually, of France collection did break it through. You know, using a very new high technique on the computer sculpting and also we have a worldwide pattern right mm-hmm. about the new mold, the new material for the molding, the molding to, to overcome the uh, old issues. Uh, why porcelain cannot be so three-dimensional? Mm-hmm. So we, we successfully make it uh, very three-dimensional and even the color we make it very vibrant because we are using a new uh, material to do the graze, mm-hmm. to do the grazing, make it very uh, shining and uh, very even, also very uh, can make this puzzling can last uh, much, much longer. So uh, through this technique things, plus our own uh, uh, our contents mm-hmm. for this uh, a porcelain pieces always have a story and always have a very good cultural value mm-hmm. in these porcelain pieces. We talking about the story, we talk about the, the emotion, we talk about the cultural things. So with these things, uh, we really can uh, get into the market uh, with a very big uh, response from the consumer and people show their appreciation to our products. Mm-hmm. I think this makes our friends collection uh, successful in this 10 years, very short time, mm-hmm. and, and make it very unique from compared to the European manufacturers or Japan manufacturers. Um, you've also um, employed, uh, or you've also worked together with um, other designers, yes. uh, Italian designers, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Sure. And, and there's also the latest technology, which is 3D printing. How mm. important is it to stay in trend and also to make sure that you are always ahead of your customer, mm. um, to make sure that you set the trend uh-huh. and you tell people this is what it should be uh-huh. and how it should look. Okay. It, you know, how do you do that? Well, first you just compare to the other manufacturers and what they are doing and how can you make a unique things mm-hmm. uh, to make it dif- to differentiate from them. So we as our designers have to pay attention to it and uh, luckily we've been in this business for over 30 years so we, we figure a way about how to find out your mind, mm-hmm. especially for the certain customers and what their lifestyle is and we try to do it mind to mind yeah. and to figure out what they need, what they want. Of course, a lot of time they cannot tell you what they want, uh-huh. and then, but you have to figure it out. So this is what we call the trend. And the designer has to be ahead of the trend. So to figure out the certain people, uh-huh. these people, your target customer, what they're really thinking. So they have they to be able want. to read right, their mind, right? Their mind. So this is a very important thing. I think this makes us uh, 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 quite a lot of difference. Um, what would your advice be to entrepreneurs out there, especially in Asia, mm-hmm. looking at um, how huge the opportunity is? Mm-hmm. I mean, China mainland uh-huh. is just a market full of opportunities. Yes, right. What would your advice be to entrepreneurs mm-hmm. in Asia out there? I think it's, uh, let's t- take a look at India and, and China. Only these two countries already have a 50% of the population <laughs> in the world. So how? Can you do the business with this kind of population? Of course, you have to think about there are uh, wealthy people, also poor people. Mm. What business do you really want? What are you are strong at, and what they can, uh, what you are, uh, what this market really can create an opportunity for you, your co-competence. Mm. And so, of course, there are many many competitors for sure. Mm-hmm. But if you get into this emerging markets. Uh, 
how can you survive over there? Mm. So you had to figure it out. But as an entrepreneur, I think everybody has a dream, and also they are looking for world to have a better opportunity. But I do believe that uh, emerging markets, especially the Asian side, is a, a very good chance for you to get in. Mm. But have to figure out what you're strong at, and then. And from there, whether you really can uh, work with uh, local people to find the right partner and whether you can send out your own talents to manage their market. Cause, cause, as, as you mentioned just now, right, you have to make sure that you are able to read their mind and yes, know what right. they want. If right. they don't know what they want, you have to tell them yeah, right. what, what, right. this is what you want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is very important. I think a lot of people, when they are not short of money, actually, they really have everything, but mm. they still want something, <laughs> but they don't know what. <laughs> right? So they have money to spend, but they don't know what to spend yeah, on. Yeah. Right? This is the designer for or, or, uh, a so-called uh, uh, a company who are a trained leader. Mm -hmm. They have to uh, figure out. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Franks. That was yeah. a very interesting interview, and we wish you the best of luck. And uh -huh, thank, thank you very you. much. And we look to forward to see and hear more from Franks Black Shade. Thank <laughs> okay, you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Franks Chen, dari Taiwan. Terima kasih kerana berada di sini. Kembali bersama Abi Susamani. Saya juga sokong kami melaporkan untuk Astro Awani dari Pada Monte Carlo. Okay. Hi, anda bersama saya Reza Zulkafi. Kita ketika ini bersama dengan Michael Wu, pemusi dan juga ketua pengarah Hong Kong Maxim. Dan beliau adalah pemenang daripada China, China Hong Kong dan juga Macau. Hi, Michael. Thank you for joining us today. Now, first of all, let's talk about um, the, the the business itself, uh, food uh, industry. I'm sure it's doing well right now. And maybe you can share with us the growth story and how you come. Uh, about to be in this stage right now? Well, Maxim's is primarily a restaurant com a company. We're based in Hong Kong with presence in China, and we just started Vietnam. We're in Chinese restaurants, Western restaurants, bakeries, fast food. We're the uh, exclusive franchisee of Starbucks in certain territories, Hong Kong, Macau, and Vietnam. Uh, as well, we, we have a sushi chain called Genki Sushi. Um, our company's focus primarily in the past 10 years since I've taken over was primarily we're focusing on uh, building brands. Building brands which appeal to the younger generation um, who are concerned about lifestyle and also um, quality and uh, premium brands. So that's our focus and we have about 650 outlets in Hong Kong. We've started expanding into China a few years ago where we have a hundred and so outlets uh, already. Um, our main expansion is in first tier cities in China, so Shenzhen, Guangzhou, uh, Shanghai, Beijing. Uh, we're, we're be in, to all these cities by the end of this year. Um, and slowly we'll be expanding into all the second tier cities into China as well. Let, let me get this, get this right. 650 outlets in Hong Kong itself. That's right. How do you manage? I'm sure you have to have the right pool of uh, human capital to actually manage this huge expansion in Hong Kong, in China, and also in Vietnam. How do you do that? Well, we employ 17,000 people in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong is a very small place, but uh, it's a very international city. And because we operate under so many different brands, we have fine dining, but we also have fast food. We have Starbucks and we have sushi. So yeah, 650 sounds like a lot for one company, but don't forget we're operating under 10 different concepts and about uh, 15 or 20 different brands. Um, most of these brands are our own. We developed them, we, we, started, we started these brands. Uh, certain brands like Starbucks and Genki Sushi and the Puda Ramen we franchised. Mm -hmm. But by and large, we like to do our own brands. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how do you um, see entrepreneurship in Asia? Because with lots of opportunity, especially with huge markets such as Hong Kong, Indonesia and India, um, what would your advice be to entrepreneurs out there who wants to go out and go big? Well, first of all, Hong Kong as a city uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs. Most of them, however, are in the property and trading finance related fields mm -hmm. because uh, Hong Kong is a hub for, is a hub for yeah. that. And also, it's very, very difficult to start a business in Hong Kong. Costs are very high. 
um, and manufacturing has shifted the way to China and now Vietnam and Bangladesh. So I'm very honored to be in Monte Carlo now representing Hong Kong uh, as an entrepreneur and winning this Entrepreneur of the Year award. And I'd like to set an example for entrepreneurs that uh, it is possible, uh, despite the challenges, it is possible to set up a business in Hong Kong and to prosper from it and to grow it into China and beyond Asia. To become an entrepreneur, you have to go through lots of challenges, I'm sure, right? What would you one advice be to entrepreneurs out there? That one advice that will make or break the entrepreneur? Don't have any assumptions on how your business is going to go forward because when you plan something, you're going to assume certain things. And I guarantee you, any entrepreneur, a few years down the road, their initial idea will have completely changed due to customer demands, due to trends, due to new technology. So the key to a successful entrepreneur is to be able to adapt to all these changes in market and consumer demands and then make the right decisions on how the business is going to go forward. Thank you very much, Michael. And we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Michael Wu, Pengurusi dan juga Kutu Pengarah Maxim Group daripada Hong Kong. Dan kita akan kembali ke studio. Thank you.